packaging producer International Paper is playing a key role in the nation's supply chain during the coronavirus cr crisis, producing and delivering critical food, pharmaceutical and emergency supplies to consumers around the globe. Joining us right now on the phone is Mark Sutton. He's the chairman and CEO of International Paper. He's also on the board of directors of grocery giant Kroger. And Mark, thanks for being with us today. It's good talking to you. Good morning, Becky. I'm happy to be here. You know, you've got a really great set of insights into how things are moving through this crisis. You see the number of packages that are going through in a lot of di different industries. Maybe you can just walk us through some of those items. What do you see, for instance, right now when it comes to durables or what it, when it comes to e-commerce? So those are, um, those are two really important segments. I think for the first four months of the year, uh, we have seen uh, significant growth in a number of segments. The ones you can you can imagine that are intuitive, like food, processed foods, protein, uh, all paper goods. So the the, the famous uh, toilet tissue, t paper towels, all the things that are in uh, corrugated packaging that make their way through the retail channel. E-commerce. Uh, we we talked about it on our earnings call last week. Strong orders of magnitude, double digit growth above what was already a strong growth. And then in the chemicals and pharmaceutical segment, also strong growth. I think on the um, less uh, exciting segments, and again, you can you can think of some of these as, as obvious. But beverage, for example, the retail improvement in beverage doesn't offset the food service decline, which is mostly in the form of syrups and, and things that go into restaurants. That's a huge user, a huge user of corrugated packaging, and that's down. Durable goods are down, uh, mainly because of, I think, the uncertain consumer. They've been down through this period once we went into lockdowns, and, and I think it'll depend on the confidence, the financial confidence of consumers. One that's a little counterintuitive is produce. We think about the grocery stores, and we, it's not all produce, but some produce. Uh, the, the offset in restaurants and also school cafeterias, universities and, and secondary education, uh, that drop in produce uh, and, and maybe some of the concerns consumers had initially with produce in the grocery store, that's down. So we see all of these segments moving in slightly different directions. It's been a net positive for a company uh, for international paper through the first four months. Uh, we talked last week on our earnings call as we, as we look out. I think it'll depend a lot on um, the confidence of the consumer and, and the disposable income for anything that's not essential food-related and, and normal life supplies. And the jury is still out on how successful we are reopening parts of the economy. Yeah, Mark, I was going to say, with the durables, I, how much of it do you think is because the consumer's not feeling great about things, and how much of it is just because so many of the stores are closed down? Uh, yeah, I think it's both. And that's, that's the, you know, the, the, some, some smaller durable items, I think, got substituted through an online channel. But I think the the supply side of durables is also a very good point, also been impacted by the, by the retail stores closed. And I think uh, um, a lot of purchases like that that are in that category, um, when there's this much uncertainty, I think people don't necessarily stop. They just change their timing and when they see how things are going to settle out. So that, that, I believe, will unfold over the, you know, over the next few months. And we're very hopeful that you know, each region, each jurisdiction that tries to do its reopening does it in a successful way, and um, and I think the more confidence, of course, it's related to other things like therapeutics for the, for the virus and, and ultimately a vaccine, but also just good, safe practices in opening retail uh, should help that, that category. Mark, you mentioned about how there, there's been a real shift in the way people are ordering. Obviously, the consumer side is up, but if you're looking at things from the food services side, going to restaurants, school cafeterias, obviously none of that is, is, is really at anywhere near the levels it used to be. We spoke with the CEO of Cargill on Friday, and, and he said they're actually in the process of trying to change how they run some of their lines so that they are producing more for the grocery stores, less for restaurants. Are, are you making changes like that, or do you think that these changes are temporary? Well, we supply um, all of the, pretty much all of the food suppliers that you you would talk to, uh, companies like Cargill and others. 
um, packaging for the retail channel and packaging for the food service channel. It's less of a change for us. We can make more of one type of package and less of the other. Some of our machines are capable of doing both. But as you get further down the supply chain and where the food companies have the challenge, is it's all downstream, packaged, cut, and automated for a different channel. So rest by, by meat, mm -hmm. for example, in a totally different way than a retail channel does uh, where individual consumers are going to take packages of meat. So I think um, we are a lot quicker to switch between them are looking at some Sounds of the like machinery. No. You know, it just takes a little bit of CapEx to make the change. It's, it's, it's not instant. And that's why we've seen some of the dislocations. Mark, you're also obviously an international company, company, thus the name, International Paper. What are you seeing in places like China and places like Europe where the, the coronavirus hit first and, and maybe is clearing up a little more quickly than here? Yeah, Europe, Europe is, um, is a decent-sized business for us. It's mostly packaging. Um, we are seeing country-by-country country, um, recovery. Uh, we have some businesses in, in southern Europe primarily. Uh, it's mostly food packaging. I'd say um, Italy is, is starting to recover a little bit better uh, than Spain and then France. Uh, but it's still, for our business, um, you know, it's, it was good, again, in the first three to four months of the year. Now everybody's got uh, food stocked up. The same question that we have in the U.S., which is a much bigger part of our company, is how successful are the individual countries in reopening and how confident are the consumers. And, you know, we're, we're monitoring that very closely. In China, we don't operate production facilities there, but we export from the U.S., from our joint venture in Russia and from Brazil, products into Russia, packaging and pulp pulp used for tissue and, and towel and other packaging. And that business, um, that market is um, recovering actually quite nicely, that business uh, that we export um, packaging materials and then pulp to China is recovering pretty well. 